Our scripture today is from Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Paul says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Let's pray. Lord, please speak to us now. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. I can do all things. You ever wonder what, practically speaking, that means? Does it mean if we've never had any music lessons, we can get up at the piano like David and Steve and make beautiful music? Wow, I'm going to wonder. Don't worry about it. I am. I am. (laughs) Thank you. He takes such good care of me. Do you think it means that if we just flap our arms fast enough, we can fly like an eagle? Eh, probably not. What does it mean then, practically speaking? Well, I do know this. We can do a whole lot more than most of us think we can. Back during the Great Depression, there was a young man named George Danzig, who was a freshman mathematics major at University of California, Berkeley. He arrived late to his statistics class one day, and as he sat down, he saw a couple of problems written up on the blackboard. Now, I think this crowd knows what a blackboard is. At 9 o'clock, I had to explain it. Yeah, I think we're good. It's just a whiteboard that's black. So. He assumed they were homework assignments, and so he wrote them down in his notebook. Well, the problems were a little bit more difficult than most, so it was three days later when he finally went to his professor's office and said, hey, would you still accept my late submission of this homework? And his professor smiled and said, sure, just put it on my desk. George looked at that desk, the typical desk of an absent-minded professor, piled about three feet high with books and notebooks and about three inches deep with with all sorts of papers scattered helter-skelter. And he was pretty sure if he put that homework assignment down there, it would never be seen again. But he did. Six weeks later, Sunday morning, 8 o'clock, he's awakened by banging on his door. It's his professor. And he runs in waving papers and talking about publication and and prefaces and signing and proofreading. And to make a long story short, those two problems on the blackboard weren't a homework assignment. They were examples of two statistical theorems that no one had ever been able to prove before, allegedly even including the great Albert Einstein. Well, George Danzig didn't know they couldn't be solved, and he solved them. I can do all things. Does it mean those of us who can't add two and two can do incredible things with mathematics? Also, probably not. So what does I can do all things mean? Well, in our men's Bible study, which meets over there in Fearing Hall Wednesday mornings at 10. Yes, that's a paid political announcement. (laughs) We have learned that the single most important tool for understanding a verse correctly is, go ahead, shout it out. (laughs) Bless you. Context, context. The original language and culture but much more simply, just the verses around a given verse. So let me read the context to Philippians 4.13. Philippians 4.12 says this, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. 
Paul is telling us what Philippians 4.13 means. He's saying that he has learned the secret of persevering through tough times. He's learned the secret of being content in any life circumstance, no matter how good or how bad. What is that secret? Well, that's where the second half of Philippians 4.13 comes in. Paul says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. With his permission, I'd like to share with you a little bit about my new friend, David. I've never met David in person. He lives in Colorado Springs. He emailed me one day asking questions about something I was selling online. And I'll never forget that email. Incredibly gracious, filled with kind, caring words. And that from a stranger? He called a few days later to ask another more complicated question. But I'm pretty sure most of the time he asked more questions about me and how I was doing, how things were going in my life. I just had to ask him. I said, David, is there any chance that you're a Christian? I don't think you can see a smile over a regular phone, but I'm pretty sure he did smile when he said, oh, yes, I am. And for the next few minutes, we talked about spiritual things. And then David went very, very deep. He said, you know, over the last few years, I have lost every single person I loved most in this life. Sounded like an exaggeration. But then he went on to name person after person, funeral after funeral. He must have gotten through a couple of dozen when he finally mentioned losing his uncle, who had pretty much so raised him as if David were his own son. And then he mentioned how he had also lost his best friend from school days. They kept in touch over the years. They talked every week. David said he also lost his wife. She's still alive, but she left him for another man. David said he also lost his only son. He's still alive, but he wants nothing to do with his father. Won't call him dad, refers to him by his first name. He then told me, sometimes when I think about all of the people I've lost, I feel so sad and alone. I just don't think I have the strength to go on living anymore. Having studied suicide prevention quite a bit as an Air Force chaplain, I knew what I needed to do, but I didn't get the chance because David quickly said, but when I'm feeling like that, I pray. And the Lord reassures me that he will never leave me. He gives me the strength to keep on living. Wow. But his story goes on. At age 14, he was diagnosed as a type 1 diabetic. They said if they hadn't gotten him to the hospital within a few hours, he would have died right then. But he struggled with the disease his whole life, and it's progressed quite a bit. He's 59 years old now. Can't hold down a job anymore, because full time, all he does is monitor his blood sugar level and take insulin or sugar or whatever he needs to to keep things in balance. But then David told me that in recent days, he's been experiencing diabetic blackouts. 
It happens when the blood and insulin balance really goes out of whack. And he says, I can feel myself starting to go unconscious. But I fight with all my strength to stay awake because I live alone. I can't reach my cell phone when this is happening to call 911. And I know that if I fall asleep, I will probably never wake up. He then told me that these diabetic blackouts happen several times a week and last for many hours at a time. He said, after fighting to stay conscious for a couple of hours, his strength is just depleted and he can feel himself beginning to drift off into unconsciousness. And it's then that he calls out to the Lord, please help me. And David said that every time he's called out to the Lord, he has felt inside him new strength, not coming from within, but from above. And that strength lasted until the diabetic blackout episode was over. Double wow. I'm still relatively new to this church, so I don't know how many of you may also be struggling with something like diabetes or cancer or heart disease, cognitive issues, addictions. I don't know how many of you may have lost somebody in your life that you loved so dearly that sometimes the loneliness is still overwhelming when you think about them. I don't know how many of you may be struggling with relationships, with raising a family, with work, with your retirement, with school. But I do know this. You, yes, you, can do all things through him who gives you strength. Lord, we commit to you now those challenges that we are facing and we ask that you give us the strength to meet each one. Amen.